All right, Ian, we have a Patreon. We do. Patreon.com slash CU podcast. Uh, money gets you writing. Uh, videos, <laughs> uh, full video podcasts, uh, a hangout with me, uh, and uh, and dessert. No, it's not. It's not a lean cuisine. Meal. No, and a uh, <laughs> we do a Patreon poll topic uh, each each week. All right. So in third place this week, what pinball slash arcade games would be in your dream arcade? Sixteen uh, percent. Favorite board games, twenty five percent. Number two and number one. I'll have to say, Ian, this is the the, the most voted on topic poll we've ever had in terms of total votes has pat retired from game collecting i mean that's kind of baity people number are gonna one want, people are gonna sure that number one of 59 percent has pat retired from game collecting well ian yes you, patrick I, i've made no secret on the podcast that uh i've had three main collecting goals based upon my childhood uh video game console play which was the nes second match system and Turbograph 16. Now, I did have the Super Nintendo as well, but I, I went to the PC soon after that. So those three consoles is what I focused on as a kid. Master System, not as much, but I always loved it. Basically, the three 8-bit systems we had in North America. Right. The, the three major 8-bit systems. Remember, Turbograph is 16-bit color only, but fooled you. So for a while, it's been a while, but I, I was searching for the last Turbo CD games I needed. And I, and I got the last couple, last few in the past year. And I finally got the last one in front of me. Should I show everyone? Sure. Here it is. Here. Here's the last one I got. Sid means terraforming. Everyone be happy for Patty. <laughs> it's the song. Everybody, Wang Chung for Pat's collection. Everybody's so, happy for Patty. So here's the thing. It, I, I, I don't have any more games that I'm actively searching for to complete sets. We'll just say your collections. Um, you got your Buster it, Douglas manual, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the monkey paw version of Buster Douglas I got from Chris Kohler that without the manual, I passed that on someone else like a year and a half okay. ago. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, so Master System is Master System is done, complete in box or complete in case for North America. NES is done for cartridge and then manual for all but like three games that I'll probably never get. I'm not going for full box. And Turbo Graphics is all basically everything but the box. Uh, because remember, there were th those later uh, TTI games didn't have right. uh, CD cases, so I have the basically the game in manual. All the CD games have the case. Uh, only the original CD games had boxes. Later on, they just put them in shrink wrap. Only I think, yeah, only like twenty to twenty five Turbo games CD games had boxes, something like that. The rest didn't, or actually only half. There's only about thirty, uh, thirty five to forty CD games total. Anyway, right. So I'm done. I'm done with like seeking out these these like. Uh, these high-end, hard-to-find games, like the Panesian games. Remember last year, I finally finished the Panesian games. Yes. And while I'm spending a good amount of money getting these last games, I'm not going to find a game like this in the wild. Yeah, I can try to get like a uh, a buy it now off eBay, but hell, my copy, I believe, was a snipe off eBay that someone put on, and someone got, and they re they flipped it a few months later. Then Pat has to pay the upcharge on. I mean, that's basically what you're dealing with with these with these hard-to-find games. I mean, a game who like had to pay the upcharge on it? Me. Oh, well, okay. I mean, like, cause someone, I, I, cause I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know if you're talking about you or a different Pat, so I'm, I'm just uncertain. A different Pat? <laughs> oh, um, like third person Pat, like The Rock. Um, but, but, so when, when these rare games come about nowadays, in order to get them cheap, you either got to find them if someone doesn't know about it, but even the buy it now that someone put on it was the price of this game, like maybe a year and a half, two years ago. Right. It wasn't an, an unrealistic number, but I had to pay more than double to get it. Because, you know, it, save searches, you get them late, you know, if you don't have like a bot going to alert you. So yeah, the person I got this from made like several hundred dollars profit for nothing, for no work at all on it. And then I got to pay, I got to pay the, pay the piper on it. So, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm not going to, I'm still going to look for games to buy, uh, here and there. Uh, like weird games. Like there's I, just nothing on your list. There's nothing on there's the list. There's things that you could see that you would want to buy, but there's nothing on your list that you're looking. Yeah, for. I like weird Super Nintendo games. Like working on a certain Super Nintendo guidebook. There, I picked up about five, six games that I read about in the writers. I'm like, oh, this sounds interesting. I want to pick it up. I'm like, why not? Like, like weird crap. I was always into weird crap, like the Hurricane Super Nintendo game, where it was like a dumb TV show no one liked. Right. And like, how did that even come out in North America? About a soccer playing. Uh, uh, team from Hispaniola. That's the Hispaniola Hurricanes was a Super Nintendo game. Mm. I see that in Europe, but not in here. So stuff like that, I'll still like be like, okay, that's interesting. I'll pick it up. I'll still look, like interesting PC games, but I'm not trying to complete any more sets. Like the sets is done, 
and that's what really hurts your wallet and that's what's a pain in the ass and that's the that's the grind is trying to complete sets of several hundred games that's what wears you down looking for individual games like oh you know like i may i try to like i thought about doing like a chase hq subset of games there's like eight to ten uh, chase hq games like that'd be interesting you know not including the arcade one never came out in a system where it was like a side scrolling like running gun shooter with the two guys which was weird you know but i thought about doing stuff like that i actually got i actually picked up the famicom <laughs> chase hq game just in case i wanted to do it nice you know but there was like a saturn game so you know ian you've never been a set collector so you've always been more in the mentality of where i'm probably be being now where it's like yeah you want interesting things here and there yeah but i just want interesting things and things that i want to play things you want to play plus you know i'm getting old i've been doing this for 20 you know 20 years i've been collecting since like there's a chase hq side scroller i can't arcade find game. one yeah it wasn't called chase hq oh but, okay but it's the same guys oh okay gotcha yeah you, I, know, I know you got it you started searching I was for like, it. Hmm. i think i've seen the arcade like once it plays kind of it's it's uh i think it's data east it, it, it looks like it plays kind of like sly spy-ish kind of or rolling thunderous a little bit but it's like a side scrolling you know running gun shooter chase hq is tido so oh, it's tido yeah so but it plays like that you know Hmm. I think it's one or two players, I believe, with either one of the two agents in the car. Anyway, yeah. So that's a uh, that's 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 a uh, the you know not the sun setting for good, but I'm I'm reaching the twilight of my game collecting years. Um, there's not going to be a huge amount more I buy. Yeah, I have a list of stuff I want. There's going to be labeled upgrades for for NES games here and there. I can't, I still can't find a Wario's Woods with a decent label, Ian. They sabotaged them all. Oh, they all look like shit. I don't know what the hell what Nintendo was thinking. Yeah, just use like you know paste from a glue stick on those they're all crinkly anyway so yeah I, I think it's interesting uh now that i'm at the twilight here i can get the game room set up get it cleaned out and uh i'll probably you know at port well, we're gonna be at portland it'll be really interesting to see what i'll look, get for at portland because the last two game conventions i went to i don't think i bought games i'm looking for arcade stuff i've moved on to that Oh, you're, oh, you're going to look down on our, us console collectors? No, but like I'm, I'm thinking what about what I for? want, and I have most of the black and white Game Boy stuff that I want. I am buying some Game Boy Advance stuff again ever since I got that Game Boy Advance from that uh, listener who made me that really nice one in Long Island. Um, but no, so I have the arcade machine. Uh, Skylar, uh, kindly, very kindly, I opened up my fucking door the, the other day, and there was a uh, Darkstalkers board. Uh, there, but I need, but it's a CPS two board, so I need the heart, the bottom part of it, the black bottom. Yeah, so I okay. need to buy, I need to buy an A board, and then I told Trig about it, and he was like, "Oh, I think I have a couple left in the back room. If you oh. want to grab them, we'll figure it out later." So there was no A boards, but I also picked up Super Puzzle Fighter Two Turbo, and I have X Men vs Street Fighter. So I went from no arcade games to four arcade boards. <laughs> that was the one I used to build my main machine, X Men vs Street Fighter. Gotcha. Back in the day, I remember I sold all the extra parts to it. So, um, but three of those are CPS too. I need an A board. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. What are those good for? Like hundred bucks? About a hundred, something like that. And any, I mean, you can. I've seen them as low as seventy five. So you're gonna be swapping out CPS boards instead of getting like a multi cart sort of thing. You're gonna be swapping them out. Yeah, I need a kick harness too. But what's, honestly, Vani is. What's a kick harness? Uh, so arcade boards, uh, JAMA only recognizes up to three buttons. So mm -hmm. to play something like Street Fighter or whatever, you need. Well, it makes sense. It's called a kick harness. It lets you recognize three more buttons. You play plug it into the main board. Yeah, you plug it in underneath and then attach it. It's a separate little board. So okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So are you proud of Pat? You thought I was gonna move on to something else. Why am I proud of Pat? <laughs> well, you... for like two years, you're like, oh, Pat, you're gonna you're gonna start collecting another system. You said that. Oh, yeah. I, I think you, yeah. I know I, what I keep saying is you're always gonna find something to collect, and that's very much the truth. Yeah, I've slowed down though a lot. You have. I mean, in terms of like, you have. Look, you don't. You don't. You uh, don't have three bins of shit to take home with you after you know one hour at a convention anymore. Well, yeah, that was the thing. I literally had when I go to Portland, I have a a, a box. Then again, it was so much cheaper, like six, seven years ago. Like, sure. It was getting like a super batter up in the box for like five bucks. You know, it's like stuff like that. Oh, the, whatever the the and Super Nintendo swinging bat thing. Um, yeah, I have I have my bunch of handhelds. If you ever do Ian's happy handhelds, I have a couple hundred handhelds probably at this point. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm just maturing. It used to be that I would be constantly looking at eBay for games to buy, and now it's just like when it's when it's like a weird whim or looking for this. Like even for this. You know, like I look every couple of months. It was it was almost like serendipitous that I found this for sale. It was a buy it now, and I I did an offer and got it cheaper, thankfully. 
um, on it because it's more than I want to spend on it. And that's the thing. If you look at the, the, the money I've been spending, it goes up and up when you try to finish a set because it's so expensive. But the, the volume of games I bought the past year, I don't think I bought more than 10 games, 12 games the past year. Mm. I just don't think I have. That includes going to conventions and picking up one or two weird ones I see, like a weird that that weird Genesis uh, magic game, you know, things like that, or like or or that one where you you fight poachers, the beat the brawl, you fight poachers, growl, yeah, stuff like that. I'm like, oh, that's pretty pretty cool. It's an interesting. So that's what's gonna like attract me more and more is things like that, or getting like um like the plush, like like Luigi Mario plush down there. I, I found at a convention the updated uh, plush right there, stuff like that. Like that's the stuff I'm looking for, like the weird toys or like the weird. Uh, those like those um, uh, was it those Nintendo playing card giveaway things that Frank gave me last year, that were the, the giveaway from what the oh, hell yeah. was it, you know things like like that. So anyway, yeah, you're not, you're not proud of Pat for. Proud I mean, I'm me. proud of you. I'm proud of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's on a celebration. You should have a little those little pop things in the air. Woo! 